Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE, Enterprise Core, exam. In this lab, we'll examine the RSTP sync process that we covered in the previous lecture video. The examples in that video were quite simple. Two or three switches connected without any loops. This time there is a loop, so one port will have to be blocked. We'll see how the sync process deals with that. The root, designated, and alternate labels show the role that each port will have once the network has converged. You should be comfortable with identifying port roles by now, so we'll skip that process. Now let's read the lab instructions. First, it says that connections between switches are administratively disabled. So we're going to enable each link one by one and observe the sync process that takes place. Then, it says to enable spanning tree event and synchronization debugging before starting the lab. Before recording, I already did that on switches 2, 3, and 4, so I'll just enable it on switch 1 now. To debug events, it's debug spanning tree events, and to debug synchronization, it's debug spanning tree synchronization. Okay, now let's get started with step 1. It says to start a packet capture and then enable the switch1 switch2 link. I've already prepared packet captures to look at in this video, and I'll include them in the lab files that you can download. When you do this lab, feel free to use my packet captures, or you can take your own. Since I already have the files, I won't do the capture again, so let's enable the switch1 switch2 link. I've set up the panes in CML with switch1 on the left and switch 2 on the right. So I'll enable both of their G00 interfaces, and then let's observe the debug output. On switch 1 first, conf t, interface G00, and I'll just type no shut, but won't execute it yet, so we can make both ports come up at roughly the same time. So switch 2 next. conf t, interface G00, no shut, Okay, now I'll execute the commands on switch 1 and switch 2. Let's observe the output on switch 1. This is identical to what we saw in the lecture video. Switch 1 initializes G00 as a designated port, transmits proposal BPDUs, and because switch 1 has the superior BPDU, switch 1 receives an agreement from switch 2. How about on switch 2? Similarly, Switch2 initialized G00 as a designated port and transmits a proposal, proposing itself as the designated bridge for the segment. But then it says, update roles, received superior BPDU on G00. So Switch2 makes G00 its new root port and transmits an agreement on G00, accepting Switch1's proposal. Notice that Switch1 and Switch2 generate topology change TC traps as well. We will look at the RSTP topology change process in a separate video, so we'll skip over it for now. Now let's look at the packet capture. The first capture's name is PCAP1 switch1 switch2. Here it is, and to make it easier to look at, I'll right click the first message, go to Colorize Conversation, and mark this as red. So, all messages from switch 1 are marked red. And I'll click this message from switch 2, again go to Colorize Conversation, and then mark it as blue. So, as you can see here, at the beginning, switch 1 sent two BPDUs, identifying itself as the root bridge. You can see that here, root equals priority 0, VLAN ID 10, and then this MAC address, which is switch 1's own MAC address. Switch 2 also did the same, sending two BPDUs identifying itself as the root bridge, messages 3 and 4 in this capture. Let's open up the STP message contents of Switch 1's first message, message number 1, by clicking on Spanning Tree Protocol here, and then expand the BPDU Flags field. A classic STP BPDU only uses two bits of the flags field. Topology Change Acknowledgement the first flag, and topology change, the last flag. As you can see here, an RSTP BPDU 
uses all eight bits for different flags. These additional flags are used for the sync process, to identify the sender's port role, and to identify whether it's in the forwarding state or not. So switch one set 1 1 here in the port role flag, indicating that its port is designated. And it set the proposal flag to 1, attempting to initiate the sync process. Now let's look at switch 2's first BPDU, message number 3 in this capture. The flags are the same, the port role is designated, and the proposal bit is set. Next, let's look at message number 6. This is switch 2's agreement BPDU. Notice that the flags have changed. The agreement flag is set, and so is the forwarding flag. This means that switch 2's port is already in the forwarding state. The learning flag is set also, which might seem odd. This doesn't necessarily mean it's in the learning state. It means that it is capable of learning MAC addresses. This flag should be set if the port is in the learning state or the forwarding state. The port role has changed from designated to root, and the topology change flag is set. Now, switch to didn't just send one agreement. Look at message number 8. It also has the agreement flag set. And message number 10 as well. It has the agreement flag set too. So to make absolutely sure that the neighbor receives the agreement, it actually sends three agreement BPDUs. And let's look at switch 1's responses to these agreements, starting with number 7. Look at the flags. The forwarding and learning flags are set to 1. This means that after switch 1 received switch 2's first agreement, it immediately moved its port to the forwarding state. And the port role is designated. Just like switch 2 sent three agreements, switch 1 sent three of these responses, messages 7, 9, and 11 in this capture. After that exchange, switch 2 stops sending BPDUs out of its new root port, and the rest of the BPDUs are the regular BPDUs that switch 1 sends every two seconds. Okay, so we saw the different flags that are used in RSTP BPDUs and observed the use of the proposal and agreement flags in the sync process. I have included some other captures in the files for you to examine, but we won't look at them in this video. Let's return to the lab now and go back to the lab guide. So we finished step one, analyzing the debug messages and the packet capture, identifying the different flags set in each BPDU. Now let's do step two, which says to do the same on the switch three, switch four link. Note that the vertical connections here between switch 1 and switch 3 and between switch 2 and switch 4 are still disabled, but we're going to enable this switch 3 switch 4 link first. So set up the panes with switch 3 on the left and switch 4 on the right, and let's get the commands ready. On switch 3, conf t, interface g01, and then just type no shut, and then switch 4. Conf T, interface G01, no shut. Okay, let's execute the commands on both devices. So the output here is basically identical to the output we saw on switch 1 and switch 2, so I won't cover it message by message. Switch 3 and switch 4 each sent proposals, and switch 4 recognized that switch 3's proposal is superior, so switch 4 made G01 its root port, and sent an agreement to switch 3. By the way, if you want to see the capture for this, the file name is pcap2 switch 3 switch 4. Okay, that's enough for this step. Let's return to the lab guide. Step 3 is where things start to change. Switch 1 and switch 2 agree that switch 1 is the root bridge, and switch 3 and switch 4 agree that switch 3 is the root bridge. Now, we're going to enable the connection between switch 1 and switch 3, and see how the sync process works out. So this time, I'll set up the panes with switch 1 on the left, and switch 3 on the right. Then on switch 1, interface G01, and type no shutdown. And then switch 3, interface G00, no shutdown. Okay, let's execute the commands and see what happens. This time, the output is different from before. 
On switch one, it looks the same. G01 is initialized as a designated port, transmits proposals, and receives an agreement. But the output on switch three is different. So switch three initialized G00 as a designated port and started transmitting proposals. It then received a superior BPDU from switch one and made G00 its root port. However, it has a downstream non-edge port, G01, that is currently in the forwarding state. So notice the message that says, syncing port G01. This means that G01 moves to the discarding state and attempts to initiate its own sync process on that port. After that, it transmits an agreement to switch one on G00. So the sync process with switch one is done. How about the sync process with switch four on G01? Switch three transmitted a proposal and received an agreement from switch four. Actually, let's look at switch four's output as well. It says, update roles, received superior BPDU on G01, synced G01, and transmitting an agreement. Okay, that was the process we covered in the lecture video when we looked at the three switch topology. Switch three received a superior proposal from switch one, blocked its G01 port, agreed to switch one's proposal, and initiated its own sync process with switch four on G01. If you want to view the packet captures, I saved one for the switch one switch three link called PCAP three switch one switch three, and one for the switch three switch four link called PCAP four switch three switch four. Now let's return to the lab guide for step four. It's the same deal, but now we're going to enable the switch to switch four link, creating a loop in the LAN. Let's see what happens. So I'll set up the panes with switch two on the left and switch four on the right. Let's get ready to activate switch two G01 and switch four G00. On switch two, interface G01, no shut, and on switch four, interface G00, no shut. Let's see the output. Switch 2's output is simple. It initialized G01, transmitted proposals, and received an agreement from switch four. Switch four, on the other hand, has a bit more output. It initialized G00 as a designated port, transmitted proposals, and then received a superior BPDU on G00. So before we enabled this connection, switch 4's root port was G01, connected to switch 3. However, now that this connection is enabled, as these debug messages show, switch 4 made G00 its new root port and blocked G01. It's now an alternate port. The path via switch 2 and the path via switch 3 have the same root costs, but I configured switch 2's bridge ID to be lower than switch 3's. So switch 2's BPDUs are superior. Okay, in this lab, we observed the RSTP sync process that we covered in the lecture video, examining the debug output that's shown as these switches use the RSTP sync process to create a loop-free LAN without relying on timers. We also looked at a packet capture of the sync process, observing the different flags used by RSTP BPDUs. That's all for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCMP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Yonatan Makara, Velva Jacob, George, Nasir Chowdhury, Gustavo Macedo, Marcel Lord, Pavel M, Dragos Hirnea, Zakib Shah, Mara Salman, Vitaus194, Chance Carter56, Mark Jackson, Bold1C1U, Michael Carroll, Gerald Guiam, Fristas1207, Gabriel Braga, Hector Hernandez, Roji Kuriakos, Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Owad, Daniel Brown, Jose Alvarez, Hussein Yavuz, Samuel Tavares, Kevin Hayes, Roger Bratseth, Brian Grant, Georgi Gemijev, Cats for Life, Adelson Pereira, Farad69, Joyce Njoroge, Lucian Stoichetoyu, Madmark50484, Alexandru Stratan, Hiago Picalho, DMJ2, Kurt Nell, Omid Farakesh, Steve Cox, Jasper Yim, Wilmer Romero, Pedro Hartman, Tricky Mickey123456, Ivano Capuano, Enigma G, 
Jefferson Steelflex, Burl Campbell, Abhishek Sahu, Toxic, Sinan Sarisenar, Gio, Daniel Andrade, Mike Krumbi, Jairo Francisco, Dragos George, Philip Yovanovich, Random User 7547, Wagner Botelho, Mateusz Wzaszynski, Ruben Hernandez, Alecro Jedi, Girish, Trevor Goldman, Gavin Paul Tech, Sunny Idigu, Jeffrey C., Stephen White, Shami Ashmi, Haven Idifikair, Dot 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 Dot, Dragon J, Fio Fio Hein, Omkar Rao Rane, and Dimitro Lees. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching.